Hollywood Mystery Time, starring Gloria Blondell and Carlton Young. And now, Hollywood Mystery Time. Tonight, the case of the glowing eyes. Being secretary to a Hollywood producer, even a quickie mystery producer like Jim Lawton, sounds like that glamour job most girls dream about. But if you're Jim's secretary, Gloria Dean, and your boss makes a habit of involving you in very real murders at the most peculiar hours, well, your dreams are likely to be filled with clutching hands and screams in the night. Right now, she's home in bed dreaming about sea breezes and swaying palms when her very pleasant dreams are rudely interrupted at 7 a.m., by a noise that annoys all of us. Uh, oh, oh. Hello, Gloria. This is your boss, remember? I haven't any boss until 9 a.m. Please call then. Good night. No, Gloria, wait a minute. This is important. I've got a sensational idea for a new horror mystery in Technicolor. Oh, the pink elephant and yellow dragon? Uh-huh. I'll go back to sleep, Jenny. You'll feel much better in the morning. I can't. I've got to be in school by 8.30. Is this a nightmare or am I dreaming? Gloria, I'm serious. It's all part of the research for our next picture. Now, meet me at the USC campus at 825 Sharp. I want you to take notes at a lecture. Not me. I don't know my ABCs. I stop every time I get to you. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> You're sweet, Gloria, even at 7 a.m. Mm. But as they title the last picture I didn't make, we've no time for love. Now, Gloria, don't let me down. This is going to be the greatest mystery since, well, since my last one. Jim, dear, that one was so bad I really thought it was going to be your last one. Good morning, gentlemen. Our subject is chlorethion, that remarkable liquid which, under ultraviolet ray, produces a strange glowing effect. Pure fluorescein will appear under the ray, a ghostly green color. Well, job, Gloria, taking notes. And tonight, I'll prove it to you. Tonight? Yes, tonight. We're going to see a practical demonstration of Professor Davidson's theories at Pierre's nightclub. From college student to nightclub roué in one easy lesson. Jim, I don't get it. Purely research, darling, purely research. What do we do in the meantime? You run ahead. I'm going back and talk to Professor Davidson. I want to pick up a few more ideas. I'll meet you tonight at Pierre's at 8 p.m. sharp. Mr. Lawton and Miss Dean. Good evening. Good evening, Pierre. Pierre. Very fort, too, eh? Right this way, please. Well, there's a good table. How is this, monsieur? Uh, will it give us a good view of the fluorescent dancing? <laughs> the very best, monsieur. The very best. Aha, uh-huh, a dancer. Now I'm beginning to understand why we're here. Please, Gloria. She uses fluorescent body makeup under ultraviolet light. And I'm interested in the effect. That's all. Knowing you, I can't quite believe that. No, Gloria, when I'm working on research for a picture, I'm strictly business. That's just what worries me. You have a habit of making business a pleasure. Your attention, messieurs and madame. The light for dim. It's Mimi and her sensational Boris and Dawn. Mmm. Rather attractive. Or uh, haven't you noticed? Yes. Fluorescein certainly gives an amazing effect. I wasn't particularly commenting on the fluorescein. As a special feature, Mimi introduces for the first time the most daring dance ever presented. The dance of the glowing eyes. Well, looks like we're in for a premiere performance. I don't like this. Don't like what? Pierre coming on stage with that yellow liquid. He can't possibly think of putting that in her eyes. But he is. Look, he has an eyedropper. He's dropping the liquid right into her eyes. Stop! 
Stop in heaven's name, stop! Jim, you're not on the set now. You can't stop the act. Stop, I say. Don't drop any more of that liquid into her eyes. Stop! Jim, Jim, don't go out there on the floor. What is the meaning of this, Monsieur Lawton? That isn't pure fluorescent you put into her eyes. Something else has been mixed in. She's liable to be blinded. Oh, my eyes. Oh, they're beginning to burn. Help! Help! Somebody give me a hand. Can I help, Jim? Yes, Gloria. Call an ambulance at once. I'll go along. You stay here, Gloria, and keep your eyes open. Search Mimi's dressing room if you possibly can. I'll watch Pierre, too. Be careful. Uh, right here with that st- stretcher, man. Oh, That's hurry. It. Oh, my eyes. Easy, Mimi. Oh, my eyes. Easy. Now, stand aside. Please let these men through. We've got to get this girl to the hospital. Oh, such excitement is not good for business, Miss Dean. Business? What about Mimi? Oh, yes, poor Mimi. You know, I don't understand. Mimi came to me tonight. She was very excited. She has new picture for her act. Fluorescent in her eyes. It is harmless, she says. Gives a beautiful glowing color. Mm. She tells me to put it into her eyes after I introduce her. And that is all I know. I do only as she says. Pierre, would you mind if I looked in Mimi's dressing room? But of course. Anything to help us clear up this horrible thing. This way, mademoiselle. Wait. Wait, there's someone in Mimi's room. I will open it very quickly. We will surprise him, yes? Saunders, what are you doing here in Mimi's room? You know him? Oh, of course. He's the janitor who sweeps around the nightclub. Well, answer me, Saunders. What are you doing here in Mimi's room? I'm only sweeping up, Monsieur. I always do while Mimi is out on the floor. Well, we can't prove that by Mimi, so I guess we'll just have to take your word for it. Can I go ahead with the cleaning now, sir? No. No, you wait. We would like to look around a bit first. Uh, this is her makeup kit, isn't it, Pierre? Well, yes, as far as I know. I rarely came into Mimi's dressing room. She was, uh, how do you say, uh, very secretive about her personal life. Uh, do you mind if I open this kit? I may pick up a few beauty hints. Oh, what's this? Hmm? It's all just a piece of paper. <laughs> Perhaps it is only a love note from one of Mimi's many admirers, nothing more. But... What a strange love note, Pierre. Listen to this. My dear Mimi, one unbearable week has gone by without seeing you. Meet me for supper at the usual place. You must come. Your partner? A partner? That's all right. And, and look, he adds a question mark right after the word partner. Maybe the partnership is on the verge of being dissolved. I can make no sense of this. Uh, tell me, was, was Mimi married or, or about to be divorced? No, no, of that I am positive. Oh, then maybe it was a, a business arrangement. Ah, that could be, oui. Yes, there was a man, oh. a strange man, a famous makeup artist, I believe. Yes, it was he who gave Mimi the idea for her for a mm. uh, Perhaps they were partners. Oh, but of course I'm just guessing. Well... Oh, thanks, Pierre. You've been very cooperative. Almost too cooperative. Can I start sweeping again, Monsieur? Mm, yes, Fondos. Uh, will that be all, Miss Dean? Oh, oh, just one more thing, Pierre. I'd almost forgotten. Uh, do you happen to recall the name of this self-advertised partner of Mimi's? Well, I should know it. You know, Mimi often said he is truly a master of the art of makeup. So yeah, delicate the name. So she... Oh, yes, I remember now. Yes, his name. Uh, it begins with a B. <laughs> Sanders. But why do you... you... Shoot me. Good heavens, Sanders, you must be out of my, your mind. You killed him. Yes, and one peep out of you and you join him. <laughs> doesn't make sense. This won't make sense either, Miss Dean, but I'm forced to do it. <laughs> Hollywood Mystery Time will continue in just a moment. And now back to Hollywood Mystery Time. Happened. I I remember now. Sanders killed Pierre, hit me on the jaw, he escaped, and... No, and, and... hold on a minute, one thing at a time. I know Pierre's uh, dead. The coroner's examining the body now, but 
Who is this, this Sanders? He, he's the janitor. He was in Mimi's room when we went to look it over. Just as Pierre was about to mention the name of Mimi's partner, Sanders killed him. I saw the whole terrible thing right before my eyes. Did Pierre manage to say the name of Mimi's partner? Well, all, all he had time to say was that, that it began with a B. Well, we better let the police in on this so they can start searching for this Sanders. The star witness, like you, Handy, it shouldn't be a hard case for them to solve. Wait, does you hear anything? Yeah, coming from down the hallway. I'll go see what it is. I'm coming, too. Let me out! Let me out! Locked in this closet. It, it, it's Sanders. Uh, someone hit me over the head and locked me in here. That's the man who killed Pierre, Jim. I saw him. Pierre killed? Me? I tell you, I've been locked up in this closet. That's a good alibi, Sanders. A closet with a door locked from the outside. But, of course, you could have had what the police would call an accomplice. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I tell you, someone hit me on the head and locked me in here. Suppose you tell that to the police. It's your alibi against this young lady's vision. And knowing her, well, I'm inclined to believe her. I've watched criminals before, but that's the first one who's ever had the nerve to contradict an eyewitness. I tell you, you're both crazy. I've been hit on the head and I... Maybe the blow affected his memory. Or maybe that punch in the jaw affected yours. Gloria. Which could it be? Jim, I tell you, I saw him kill Pierre. Oh, wait a minute. I've got an idea. Let's go out in front. You too, Sanders. Ah, yeah, get up on the stage, Sanders. I want to turn out the lights. What are you going to do? Play cops and robbers and give them the third degree? No, I just want to throw a little violet light on the subject. Here goes. Well, what do you see? Nothing. That just about squashes your eyewitness report, Gloria. No, I don't get it. Well, I do. I have definite proof now this man couldn't possibly be the one we're looking for. It was too easy that way. Well, I saw him. I yes, saw him or a reasonable facsimile. Mimi told me at the hospital that the man she feared was an expert makeup man. And it isn't too far-fetched to believe he disguised himself as Sanders here when he committed the murder. Makeup expert, of course. Yes, and now that Pierre is dead, one person in all the world knows who this man really is. Mimi. Yes, Mimi, and your life's in danger. He's probably on his way to the hospital now. Come on. I hope I'm not intruding, Mimi. Oh, it's you. I can't see you, but I can tell from your voice. How did you know I was here? I heard what happened at Pierre's tonight, and I rushed over as soon as I could. What do you want? You know what I came for, Mimi. Haven't you done enough to me already? My career is ruined, and I may even be blind. Don't say that, Mimi. Don't say that. Oh, and the funny part of it is I'm glad. I'm glad. Yes, I'm glad. Stop it, Mimi. You're making too much noise. You'll disturb the other patients. I'll let the whole world know I'm glad. Glad. Quiet, Mimi. Quiet. We're through, I tell you. Through. You're half right, Mimi. You're through. What? <laughs> My hand over your mouth will silence you for a moment. And this knife... <coughs> ...will silence you for an eternity. Help! Come quick! There's been an accident! Gloria, what's all this crowd here in the corridor for? Jimmy, something's gone wrong. Let me through, please. What's happened? Jim, is, is she... Gloria, I'm afraid we're too late. Say, did any of you people see a man with a... Well, I don't know what he looks like, this but... This got here first. Hey, Miss, did you see anybody? Yeah, I was down at that end of the hall. I heard a woman scream and rushed toward this door just as a man came tearing out of the room at full speed. Did you get a chance to see him? Yeah, he was wearing dark blue overalls. Well, what did he look like? Well, he had a gray beard, but from the way he ran, I'd say he was years younger than he looked. That was him, Jim, still disguised as Sanders. Gloria, suppose you run downstairs and check the door attendants. Find out if they've seen him. Okay, I'll be right back. Say, will that be all from me? I'm in kind of a hurry. Just one more question, Mr. Uh... I don't believe I caught your name. Uh, Forbes. Robert Forbes. Seems rather odd to me that a man in street clothes would be walking through a hospital hall at two in the morning. Well, uh, You're not a doctor, are you? No, you see, my, my wife's having a baby on the next floor, and I just walked down here to sort of, well, relieve the tension. Oh, I can understand that. Do you mind if I leave now? Maybe something's happened. I've been away ten minutes. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, you go right ahead. Uh, by the way, I hope it's a boy. Jim. Jim, here it is. A man answering Sanders' description entered the building at 1.45 a.m., and no one saw him leave. We'll check maternity to see if Mrs. Forbes is having a baby. Gloria, we've got to find our criminal within the next 12 hours, or what proof I have will be gone. Sherlock, dear, what kind of talk is that? I can't take time to explain now, Gloria. Come on, let's get down to maternity. I want to see Mr. Forbes again. At 
tell me, nurse, is there a Mrs. Forbes in the delivery room? Jim, why the sudden interest in baby? Quiet, Gloria. No, Mrs. Forbes already had her baby, an eight-pound boy, an hour ago. An hour ago? Yes. Nurse, it's very important that I see Mr. Forbes. Where is he? Well, you'll find him in the waiting room, I believe. He's completely recovered. Jim, what's going on? Will somebody please explain something? A lot of things may be explained in a minute. Uh... Anyone here named Forbes? Yeah, that's me. Wait a minute, Jim. That's not our Mr. Forbes. What do you know? I just had a boy in my first one, too. Here, have a cigar. Thanks. Uh, by the way, are you the only Forbes having a baby here tonight? Only one I know of. Say, what do you mean by that trick? Uh, nothing, nothing at all. Good night, Mr. Forbes. Thanks for the cigar and congratulations. <laughs> uh, Gloria, call me rattlebrain or stupid and I deserve it. Me too. He's clever, all right, to think of an alibi like that. He's a good actor, too, as well as a good makeup artist. He must have been pretty desperate to take the chance. Pretty crazy, too. Uh, let's see. I know two facts about Mr. What's-His-Name. First of all, I know he's an expert makeup man. And second? One fact at a time, Gloria. Right now, we're going to visit every makeup man in town. Right now? It's 3 a.m. I think you're the one that's crazy. Don't you understand, Gloria? Time is the key to this mystery. We've got to check every makeup man within 12 hours or we lose our proof entirely. Oh, there you go again. What's all this 12-hour talk? You talk like a sailor on a shore leave. First, we're going to stop at Professor Davidson's, the Foresian expert. I want to borrow that violet ray flashlight that he used in his lecture this morning. Well, you go borrowing flashlights and I get further and further in the dark. <laughs> This is number four on our list of makeup men, and each one seems to be living in a shadier neighborhood. This place is not only shady, it's a complete blackout. You better be careful with Professor Davidson's flashlight. I, I don't think the last guy believed it when you said you came to read his meter. <laughs> this is 213, all right. Ooh, what a weird light in this hallway. Where's the directory? Oh, here it is on the wall. Let me see. Borgia, theatrical makeup room 2A. Must be at the head of these stairs. Well, let's go. Jim. Jim, I, I don't like this. You're, you're not scared, are you? If I'm scared, you can call me a Dutch uncle. Wrong student. No! It's only a cat. I'm so me fooling. Oh. These stairs sound like they're fugitives from a Frankenstein picture. This should be the room. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah, 2A, Borgia. It's funny nobody answers. Oh, maybe he's a sound sleeper. Hmm. Borgia must be a trusting soul. He leaves his door open. I, I don't think we'd better disturb him. Jim, let's go. Steady, Gloria. We're going in. That's what we came for. Borgia's first name must have been Raymond. It's a familiar order. Definitely not my favorite perfume. It smells more like a hospital. Oh. Somebody's locked the door. Did you, Jim? No, did you? You're both wrong. No, I locked no. the door. That, that sounds like what's his name, Jim? How can we be sure? This violet ray flashlight. I'm going to turn it on. Watch. Oh. His eyes. They're glowing. What green eyes he has. The better to kill you with, my dear. If your overly curious boyfriend would lower his light, he'd see a shining black gun pointing straight at him. I'll lower my flashlight right into your eyes. Oh, oh, what you oh, that? If I could only find the light. Here it is. Oh, oh, they're both out. I guess you'd call it a draw. Oh, favor me, Jim. Darling, wake up, wake up. Uh, where am I? Not you, Borgia. <laughs> Oh, that should keep you quiet for a while. Uh, Gloria, uh, where is he? Oh, darling, he's out. Then he got away. Oh, no, darling, you just go back to sleep. Let Gloria handle everything. No, no, I've been up all night waiting for this thrilling moment. Oh, I'm sorry, dear, but it's nine o'clock and I couldn't wait any longer. You've slept enough anyhow. Oh, shoot. I mean, don't shoot. I, 
Oh, I, don't know. I don't know what I mean. My head's killing me. Jim, listen. I-, I figured it all out. You stopped Mimi's act last night because you saw a yellow glow and you knew pure fluorescent under violet ray shines green. Brilliant deduction. Mm. If you'd been listening to Professor Davidson yesterday morning instead of eyeing all the Joe Colleges, uh. you'd also have known that fluorescent can remain in the eye for only 24 hours. That's why we had to work so fast. Borgia demonstrated to Mimi how to use fluorescent by actually dropping the pure liquid into his own eye. Mimi told me that, so for 24 hours, he was a marked man. Of course. Huh? Jim! That gives me an idea, a wonderful idea. Yeah, for what? For our next picture, the first killer diller in Technicolor. Imagine now, an expert makeup man who uses a series of clever disguises... So the detective always thinks he's somebody else when he commits the murders. And then he finally is trapped by fluorescent in his eye. That's too fantastic, Glory. The public would never believe it, honestly. Now, what kind of a detective would be dumb enough to be fooled by disguises? I, uh, what am I saying? Next week at the same time, this is James Doyle saying good night. <laughs>